Hi everyone. Hi guys. Welcome back. We we love to see you again. Um, we want to talk today about a company, a house that we have really sort of fallen head over heels with, haven't we? In yeah. the last it, two years, which is all that we've it's had experience of. I think it is two years. Yeah. Two years. Two so, very long, wonderful years. Arouge Ladore, Russian Adam. Russian it's, Adam. <laughs> I was really surprised to see that when uh, Ottoman Empire, the kind of the, the first generation of fragrances came out, I have in my mind it was about eight, ten years ago. Yeah, it was two I mean, years ago. They're vintage <laughs> now, aren't they? Which yeah. is kind of bonkers. And they're absolute unicorns, which which will people you know pay almost anything for. But the new, you gotta love them. The fifth uh, generation, the fifth collection of fragrances. So we have a few here, don't we? That we're going to have a little we have got, snifter of. I I've got. These two. So let me just talk you through uh, my acquisition story, if you like. Um, these were, for, for those of you that, that are bought from our Dury, you'll know you're going to get these emails to say, oh, the new, the new fragrance is going to be released soon, it's going to happen, da 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 da. And then we have this frenetic moment when oh. everybody goes online and tries to kind of desperately order. So At 12.01 on Saturday, the whatever it might be. So I went, I went online about, it was about four or five hours after um, the fragrances had gone on sale. Um, and I'd, I'd seen the notes, I'd seen some of the blurb, and I, and I thought I'm going to try and get two fragrances, Antiquity and War and Peace. Um, so it went on, the website was down, it was not working, eventually it was Again. working, and then I could see I could see some of the fragrances, <coughs> I could see Antiquity, so I added that to my basket, um, but I couldn't see War and Peace, ah! so, so I thought, oh no, it's sold out. Um, Disaster. Uh, then, I, then I went on the, the fans of Arisa Dore Facebook group, and someone had posted a link to say, oh actually, you can't just click on the fragrance, you have to just type in this, this link into the uh, URL. Uh, and eventually, then I saw War and Peace, so I thought, yes, right, got it, great. So I managed to order that. Uh, and then I wanted to also get the samples because I wanted to try the whole range, um, but I couldn't see the sample pack um, at all. So I thought, oh no, the sample pack's already sold out. So I thought, I'm just gonna, <laughs> so stressful, I thought, it? right, okay, I'm, I, I'm worried about missing out because I know there were quite limited numbers. So I ordered these two fragrances and went for it. So. $250 and $210 plus the uh, whatever it was, $45 um, postage um, without any of the samples. Um, and then I later found out the samples hadn't sold out, they just weren't showing up on the website yet. Um, uh -huh. So I, I, I actually did something which I've ne we've not done as a channel before. I, no, no. I, I emailed Russian Adam and asked him, I said, look, I've just ordered these two fragrances. I've just spent um, $460 <laughs> on 60 it's million It's a pretty fragrance. penny, isn't it? Um, can I have samples, free samples of the other two? Yeah. Um, I didn't get a reply. So I, so I didn't get those. Um, fortunately, I was um, very lucky via the group, um, a, a friend who I've, we've swapped samples from before. I gave him a few samples of, of some other fragrances and he gave me samples of the other two fragrances so that we can talk about them today. I'm so excited. Um, so... How are we going to play it? I'm going to say it, it's a little bit of a pain in the arse, this process. <laughs> Yeah, if, I mean, I, I have to say, Dan, Dan and I, you know, when we bought the fourth collection, I, I bought a bottle of Ottoman Empire. You, well, you, that's not, that's the, that's after the fourth, that's the... Oh, well, that's Ottoman, that's yeah, two, it, that's, sorry, that, that's Ottoman Empire two and Siberian yeah. Musk. And we, ha I mean, we had the same thing in that the website was crashing and this time, purely because I hadn't smelt these at all, I was not entirely keen on making a blind buy, even though I knew they would be amazing. Um, Which is fair enough. But it's partly, but also there's part, there's part of me now that gets slightly wound up with the, you know, the sort of online rush and the fact that things are gone immediately. And yeah. I, I crave, and it's I crave some samples yeah. or something. It's frustrating to pre, see. Pre-buy. Almost as soon as the, you know, the sales are being completed, you saw things go up on eBay at yeah. really, really inflated prices. I mean, people are buying them deliberately, having no yeah. love for perfume at all. And, just so they can sell but, them on. But what I, what, what I was pleased to say, Gouging. after the first weekend when things went crazy, things then went on hold and they went um, on sale again a, a week later and Russian Adam had clearly been watching the, these uh, chat groups because he then said sales will be limited to one per person. Yeah. Which is really good. I'm glad he did that. And like, I, it's not our position to tell anybody how to do their jobs at all. Like, no. I, I don't, don't want to, but I would, I would love, I would really, really, really appreciate, I know it's not up to me, but I would really love to see samples released yeah. a month or two before. Yeah, just like a little one mil sample, to the genuine perfume lovers and the fans of, of a house like Arige that would, 
I think would have no hesitation in buying bottles if they were given the chance to smell mm. them. But it just stops this black market coming out immediately where, yeah. you know, for six, seven hundred pounds on I eBay mean, and I, upwards. I think we should kind of reiterate, like, it's not our place. It's no, just, this is, we're consumers here. Yeah, we're not we're, reviewers on anything. We're consumers of the product. We can't tell anyone how to do their business. No, no, no. It's, it's completely up to him. Um, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't be disappointed if things... So that, that's our, our little introduction. So what... But what, they, what counts is what, the juice What, what the do bottle. they smell like? Right, I've just got to pick up my strip because I've just dropped them all on the floor. So if, if, Joe, you just improvise the chat. I'm going to rack on tearing for, for a while. Good. We are going to start with the two which I didn't buy. Now, what I will say about these fragrances, so War and Peace, Antiquity, I've had for a few weeks, each of them, I've worn them about four or five days each. I've worn them a lot. Um, and I found them, especially War and Peace, to be very, very, very complicated. And they change a lot. But all of these fragrances change a lot. So we're going to film some first impressions, and then we're going to go away for a few hours. So you'll get to see Joe's first impression yeah. of these fragrances. I mean, and this is one of my favourite parts of, yeah. of perfume, <laughs> is that first thing. But um, I think it's important that we also see it a bit later, yeah. because these do change a lot. So the first one is Siberian Summer. That is the wrong one. This is why you should never buy perfumes on the first 15 minutes, because you'll smell them and they will develop. Absolutely. I know already that I'm going to love these from start to finish, right. because I do know he's a genius. Could I go on card with this, because I really want to save some skin for antiquity or do you wanna, and war and do peace. You, you do card, and I'll, I'll give you some skin of this as well. Okay. So this is Thank Siberian you. Summer. I'm going to put it on my hand as well. It's an amazing colour. It really is, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's actually really beautiful straight away, isn't it? I mean, the, the, the obvious... I'm going to, I mean, I have worn this a, a little bit more time. So this reminded me of Siberian musk quite a, a lot. I don't, I've never smelt Russian yeah. musk, so I can't talk about yeah. that. But that kind of piney quality. I've got to say, I found the opening of this to be a little bit harsh. You get quite a, if you smell it on my skin, the camphorous quality is quite big, like in your face. I like that though. I, I, I like the sort of, the boldness of that. Uh, it's really, really, really bold, isn't it? It's wow. really piney, camphorous. And I get like a little beautiful hint of like shoe polish, that beautiful yeah. waxy thing. A little bit. We should say, so this is the cheapest of the four fragrances. This is 150 euros. And um, one of the ways he managed to keep the price down a little, $150, sorry. Um, one of the ways he managed to keep the price down is it used synthetic musk, which is quite unusual for um, yeah. Russian Adam. He's quite well known for using real Russian deer musk. This has synthetic musk. It's very beautiful. I'm a big fan already. I mean, I know this will change a lot and I'll, I'm gonna smell your hand later, but. Effervescent as well, beautifully fizzy, bright. But then there's there's this sort of animalic heart beating underneath it, isn't there? Yeah, I found it's totally the, animalic. I found it, it, this isn't interesting because there there are notes which are similar to Siberian musk, but with Siberian musk you get so 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 much of this musk, whereas that's obviously not here. So I'm just getting this kind of camphorous, piney quality, and then I feel soon you get a really kind of juicy citrus. Yeah, I'm getting a lovely sweetness there as well. Yes. Like a, a sweet sour, like an umami thing. Yeah. I Instantly, I mean, if you said, who's this by, straight away, based mm. on smelling other Arige, I would say R Russian Adam, no, yeah. no doubt. I, mean, I just want to say, even though this is the cheapest, it's $150, oh. and even though it doesn't have real musk, it has synthetic musk, this is still a fragrance of amazing quality. And also, yeah. I, I, we'll talk about this later when we come back, but... Beautiful. It really develops enormously, this one. I was really surprised with the twists and turns of this one. Hi, so we're back again. After a little, a little smell, a little sniff. So, Siberian... Yeah, I mean, my God. Summer, a, a few hours in. I was really surprised with how much of a journey this particular one. Absolutely this, enormous journey. You get this camphorous, piney opening, yeah. and then you get this really big, um, uh, juicy citrus, this yeah. kind of lime and berg one. But what you're getting now is incredibly birchy. Yeah. It's, it's really rich and smoky. And I'm getting resinous. birch and cigarettes. And, and it's interesting that beautiful. he, so was, I think we mentioned before that he used, decided to use a, a synthetic musk for this. Yeah. So I don't really, Personally, I can't really detect any musk. 
Um, mm. He said he wanted to use synthetic moss because it gave a kind of dry quality in the dry down. And I, I, I feel there's a dryness. I, th I, f I find that it's just l it's lending a kind of texture rather than a, a sort of scent profile. It's not like a, a sort of animatic sweetness that you might ex expect from a musk. Yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't, I couldn't smell that and say, oh, I don't think I would pick up musk. No. Um, but I get those lovely Jutan cigarettes. Yes, it's, yeah, it's really... Smoke, it's I mean, very elegant. We've just been talking about this, and the one thing I would say about this is I feel that the, the name is very misleading, because the one thing it is yeah. not is summary at all. But we, <laughs> were, we were mentioning, weren't we, maybe a Siberian summer. What, is, is minus eight degrees? Yeah. <laughs> what, what I think, uh, <coughs> I imagine um, snow on the ground, a Siberian forest, Definitely. like ice cold, like minus 10 degrees, minus 15 degrees, but a crystal clear blue sky and walking through this ah, pine forest, beautiful. all this, this fresh pine and resin on, on your nose. Um, and then eventually as you go further in, there's, there's some kind of fire smouldering and burning it away. It's, a, it's Siberian summer in the sense that this warms you up. Yeah. In that cold weather, this warms you up and gives you a little summer bubble around mm. you. Because it's, it's still very sunny in the opening, I found. Yeah. yeah but I mean, now it's taken a well, complete detour, hasn't not, it? Not in the, uh, not in the opening, because I found the opening very camphorous, but the bit just after the opening... Not, it's not sunny, but br it's yeah. sort of brighter, Energetic. like bracing. Yeah. yeah. But especially when you've got the kind of juiciness of that citrus. And weird to have, to have the citrusy juiciness coming in kind of midway through rather than being the thing at the very top. Yeah. It's often the sort of Calabrian bergamot and stuff at the top. But I, I think something we said we, we, we were just chatting before is that you know, $150 um, for a fragrance of this really quality is really, really good. And is it my favorite Arisa Dory? No. But for the price, I think it's really, oh, it's really... Still. And I, and I, still. And I have to be honest, when, when I saw, you know, when it went up for sale, I thought this isn't going to be in one, one of the ones I'm going to buy, but it's really, really good. Yeah. And it, it is one of the ones which, at the moment, time of recording, you can still get, is, is still available. I would urge you to get it. I think it's beautiful. I'm, I might get it. I'll be, I'll be sort of slightly sad not to get the, the two that I really wanted <laughs> now, but um, it is really beautiful. Anyway, we've got to move on. So what's next? So the next one we're going to talk about is Plumeria de Oris. Beautiful. I was saying, I think it should be Plumeria Doris. There shouldn't be any. That would make more sense. But anyway, it? we're not going to be uh, too wanky about this. So, Plumeria Frangipani. Yeah. Um, I love a Frangipani sort of thing. Yeah. And Oris. So. Not, uh, not a usual combination there. No, really. but I was reading from, from his notes. Uh, I think he's saying uh, that Frangipani essential oil is the most expensive floral essential oil. And then Oris is very well known as being an extremely. Yeah. That good Very quality orange butter that you can yeah. get. Is, we smelled the real thing recently, haven't mm. we? So, all, so two very expensive ingredients. What do they smell like? Let's, do you want to go for, um, card? If you go card, and I'll go Do for card, it. you do flesh. I'm saving my skin for a uh, yeah. big boys. Okay. I'm going to go on here. So I think he said he used some frangipani essential oil and he used a small bit of a plumeria essential oil, which is the really, really expensive stuff. Now, I want to, I, when I saw this, one of the reasons I didn't buy this fragrance is because um, Bortnikov uses a lot of frangipani in his fragrances. Um, so I thought, yeah, I mean, I love, I love frangipani, but I feel I've experienced a lot of that through yeah. Bortnikov. So I didn't want to get it from, you know, more of it from Arish. Whereas I, I, I feel this is completely different. This has a wonderful, um, has a wonderful sort of soapy carrot seed thing going on as well. Interesting. To me. I just Can you get imagine this a soapy carrot? Is that sort of thing? <laughs> I get this really, really creamy, lush white floral that isn't actually that sweet. No, it's a hint of sweetness, but not a little not bit. Over much. A it's bit slightly powdery in a way, in a yeah. sort of amouage gold fashion a as well. Bit. I'm just reading. I kind of I've written lots and lots of notes. This is great, like a bible of, of wisdom here. Yes, I've written slightly sweet, very, very creamy. But not chewy, it is not, no. uh, sometimes white florals, especially frangipani and tuberose, you expect this kind of really chewy, almost uh, bite into it, kind of white floral. Um, this is this creamy, rich, really beautiful. I don't get that chewy, bubblegummy feeling I sometimes get with that sweet no. um, uh, uh, frangipani, which I get some with the Bortnikov. Nor does it have the sort of funereal gothic overtones of, of a lot of iris-based things. No. Or the paper lipstick thing, it doesn't do that either. Well, I mean... We'll, we'll, I'll see how, you, how this develops on you. Can I smell it on your hand? 
Oh, it, it, yeah, it is much more creamy and, and actually, I say, I say the paper thing, creamy magazine paper. It's such a weird yeah, reference. Yeah, I, 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 I know what you mean. This, this, this takes some yeah, interesting yeah. twists and turns as well. Especially, especially towards the end, this takes a really interesting yeah. twist and turn. Which, we'll, which we will... I'll see if you get. Because we're going to have a bottle of wine and then, and then smell these for an hour. And, and we recess. So, That's so good though. I mean, straight away the quality is immediate. For me. I know, and somehow it's what I expected, but not what I expected. If that yeah. Makes sense. I okay. think the thing we've learned is never to, never to expect anything other than anyway, originality. Let's have a break and come back to this. Okay, so we've now had a couple of hours living with Plumeria Doris. Um, oh, and it's really special. And isn't this, it? this, I feel, has also taken <coughs> quite, a, quite a journey. So we're talking about these really elegant, creamy white florals um, at, the, at the start. I never, the Oris never became irisy for me. This no, is, this, me neither. Considering Oris is in the name, I don't feel that this is a big Orisy fragrance. It was, there was a hint at the beginning of this sort of, um, like oh, the sort of the, the carroty side of iris maybe mm. that I was getting. But now, it, I mean, now it's gone into sort of beautiful creamy florals, hasn't it? And then, yeah, and then what, what I didn't expect is after a few hours you get some jasmine, which I mm. kind of uh, it warms it up a little bit. But the most and gives it that vintage vibe again as well, slightly. Yeah, a little bit. Which jasmine can sometimes do to a perfume, I think. But now what I'm getting... Um, and, and you get even more right towards the end of it, which really took me by surprise, was the, the, the civet. Um, now, as far as I know, Russian Adam has never used real civet. He's always used synthetic civet because he hasn't been able to find a source which he's um, willing, willing uh, ethically beaver. kind of, <laughs> which he's ethically, ethically happy with. Um, and once this got to the end, it reminded me of one of his second generation fragrances, which is Inverno Rosso, which is no, another... I can't remember that one. Well, that's, that's another white floral civet, but that one is very animalic, right from first spray. It's okay. really, really, really animalic. And I didn't get this at the, at the start of Primera Doris, so I, didn't, I didn't get that that's relation. Good, but now... You it's really starting to get that animalic yeah. fur, furry fuzz. Yeah. Not sort of dirty, funky, but just like the, that warm animalic it's rather a little, than... I, I, it's a little, like... I think it kind of riffs, I think it, one is clever, it kind of riffs on the slightly indolic nature of white florals. Yeah. I wouldn't just necessarily just, this, this fragrance doesn't go indolic, but I feel he's just taken, he's used the civet to mm, take that indolic quality in a different direction. Because indolic stuff can actually have a dirtiness all of its own, can't yeah. it? Which is yeah. about decay and about being on the edge of life. So I was quite surprised by this fragrance. Mm. Firstly surprised because I didn't feel like I got a huge amount of Oris, but secondly I was su surprised by the journey it kind of... Yeah, I mean, actually of all of them this has been one of the most inter interesting journeys I think because mm. it's, and it's kind of kept, it's kept sort of blooming and, and radiating. It's not died down to a few, a few sort of leftover ingredients. Mm. Like one thing has come over to take over something else and it still has a sort of, like a heartbeat running through it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, yeah, and I get. It's what you like mean it's by a sort of really yeah. radiating, glowing sort of a fragrance. It's beautiful in the way that Timbuktu just sort of gently pulses like this. Yeah, needs warm skin. But next, and a willing beaver. War and peace. War and peace. Okay, this is a biggie. For me. Okay, I'm not ready for this. But emotionally. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna spray it right into my mouth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So our third fragrance is War and Peace. This is the one, one I bought. Um, I, I just want to, I, I always try not to watch too many reviews and, and see what other people say, but it's been interesting that a few people have bought this, I think, and been disappointed. Ah, um, okay. Possibly um, because it wasn't quite what they expect. Oh, I'm just going to cut to the presentation of this because it really is lovely presentation. So here is the presentation. Here's this really lovely box, quite similar to some of the older generation of boxes. Um, but the padding is, gorgeous. he's got rid of that kind of, um, kind of quilted thing. And he's just put this more, slightly more secure padding. But I really like these bottles. They're quite similar to the Siberian Musk II, Ottoman Empire II bottles. Um, 
but he's replaced that slightly bling cap with this kind of gemstone thing, which is pretty lovely. The other thing he's done is all of the notes list, he's actually kind of printed on the lid, which is pretty classy. Especially when great, isn't it? such an unusual notes list as this. So, as you will um, see from the beautiful presentation, I think maybe people were a bit misled. It looks like a real Batman of a fragrance. It looks really, really dark. It's sort of dangerous somehow. Hyper-masculine. And, yeah. and people maybe thought it's going to be this hyper-masculine leather. Um, a Tuscan leather for the modern, the modern yeah. era, perhaps. Which I don't think it, it, it is that. I found... I didn't completely fall in love at first sniff. I'm just going to spray it on Joe's hand. Um, and this is the best thing that's happened to me all week, by a long way. There we go. Oh. Um, Look at that. I, yeah, as I say, I've worn this four or five times, um, and I found this... I didn't completely fall in love when I first sprayed it, but I found it to be one of the most complicated and therefore rewarding fragrances that I've smelled of Russian Adam. So it's, it's built around this co-absolute of, of castorium, deer musk, and ambergris which was his kind of starting point. And then he's added some other dark uh, um, elements like vetiver and patchouli, but he's also added some lighter elements like rose and orris to get this competing war and peace. I, I get a big, I get a big, if I was to put it in two words, a suede iris. Okay, interesting. That's my, the texture of suede, the chalkiness of iris. Mm. So I, when I met Joe today, gentle smoke. Um, I had put on, I had put on one spray of this on, on, on my on my skin about five hours before seeing Joe. And what did you say when you smelled it? Well, a, I loved it. B, smoky, sort of smoky, ambery. Yeah. Not necessarily leather. It didn't come across as a big leather. Yeah. Thing. But also the the, the work, like the, the other fragrance you mentioned. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Oh, you said you said Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire, yeah. Which is interesting that you made the, that kind the of DNA straight away. Yeah. I thought I thought it was Ottoman Empire from a distance. Yeah. A sort of twelve hours in. I find this the opening of this quite unusual, quite unoriginal. So this has the, the top. The only top note listed here oh. is thirty-five million-year-old amber resin, which sounds kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, I think because normally we're more expensive. We experience with twenty-five million-year-old. Um, I no. tend not to go anything yeah. under 25 yeah. million years old. Um, I just find it scandalous. When we did our, our, our video about um, perfume oh. ingredients with Sarah McCartney, she said that a fossil amber is basically never used because it's too expensive. Yeah. So this is, this is an instance of when it's used. And on first spray, I get... I don't know, I was a bit confused because I do get a bit of muskiness. I also got a bit of a Coca-Cola vibe. I was literally about to say, yeah. like, a, like a cherry Coke thing. Yeah. That's incredible. We're both absolutely on the same page. But I also get I get a slight smoky incense vibe as well. Yeah. Can I smell it on your. Yeah, I get this kind of smouldering incensey. Like, I find it quite difficult to pin down. I mean, yeah, it's it's already in just a, like two minutes or so. It's gone from like this iris suede thing, now into like a fizzy poppy thing. It's very interesting. And I feel it kind of goes back and, and forth from this a little bit as, as you and work through it. Again, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a slightly powdery thing, like I'm getting in the Auris, um, a slightly powdery, um, like talky powder mm. kind of thing, but a really heavily scented one. Yeah. I found Very it, vintage I somehow. I found it more auris actually, than the Plumeria de Auris. And I, I, really, really I, I really felt that the, the Auris played... Um, the, the, the role of kind of accentuating that kind of leather effect. Yeah. They kind of combined with the castorium. I don't, I don't get anything overly gothic or sort of dark and dangerous. Not yet, no. It's, it's sort of quite effervescent to me at the moment. But I was surprised. Lots of people describe this as a oh, I love it, musky though. rose fragrance. A little bit. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but I don't I didn't, I didn't really... I mean, there, there, I think there are two types of rose. So he mentions uh, Rue Gulab, um, 2019, uh, which is rose. And I think in another um, video, he's mentioned that there is also some Thai rose. So there uh, are two, but I don't feel... That's that from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I don't feel this is a, a Thai rose or, or musky rose. It's just, lending, it's just lending a bit of complexity, a bit of, a bit of sort of texture in the middle. Yeah. But... It, but we're gonna, That's not what it comes we're across now gonna as. We're going to go away and take a break and see how this develops on Joe. As I said, I've worn this four or five times. And, wow. Um, but I just want to see how it, you know... And again, I mean, develops. you probably can't see that, yeah. but look at the oil there if I do that. There's a lot of oil in these x-rays. 
Okay. It's, it's I mean, already, I'm going to say, I love it. Let's take a break and we'll come back. Talk to you about this. <clears throat> I want to go on a date with my hand. <laughs> oh, it's fucking good, isn't it? Okay, so... That's wearing off. I think I might need your bottle. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> but all right, so we've now... Joe has now spent a few hours with War and Peace. I, I just want to reiterate I that it. I've worn this for four or five days in a row and, and I find it really complex yeah. and a lot to it. What, but also, if you'd showered in that time, you'd get <laughs> even would more nuanced. It made a difference. <laughs> no, it, I mean, I have to say that this thing has... It started off for me as, like I said to you, a sort of iris suede thing. But the smokiness has just gradually been like filling and filling and filling. Oh, and as, just as you move your hand like that, I'm just getting wafted. It's just so beautiful, isn't it? Oh, and it this it is lasts. a real waft in the loft I, today. I, the other thing I will say about this, which really surprised me, um, well, it quite surprised me. This is the most complimented Arisa Dori fragrance I've ever ah. worn. I was really surprised that I, I wore it in reasonably close proximity to people and I was with someone who kind of one day said, oh, you smell great. And then the next day he's like, oh, you're wearing this. And then he grabbed someone else and said, hey, come and smell Dan. Come and smell what Dan's wearing. It's really, really amazing. And the way he, he, he described this uh, the fragrance, he's, he's not a fraghead at all, um, but he described it as, he's, um, he said he has a friend who is an, uh, an Italian accordion player. Mm. And, and he remembers that in the, the break from rehearsals, he we used to smoke a pipe, so he would sit there before he was smoking the pipe, and he would stuff the, the pipe with tobacco, and he'd always be drinking an espresso or a double espresso. Um, I don't think this necessarily smells of either um, tobacco or espresso, but I understand what he means by that bitter, smoky richness of those those two things. Yeah, it's interesting you say that now, talking about an accordion, and it's bringing to mind like a really random memory for me of like a a store cupboard full of full of instruments, full of stringed instruments. And the smell of all that, all of that wood, and and like rosin for the bows, all that uh, that sort of combination as well, mm. like stored away in a r warm, dusty room somewhere. Mm. So it's yeah, giving me a wonderful picture. The the other thing which people, um, somebody else oh. said, it smelled like. I'm trying to think, what, like they said, like old benches. Mm. So it smelled like old wooden benches. But again, it's this old kind of smoky wooden kind of. I. But it's not a conventional woodsy thing. I, I, I found this. A really complex fragrance. I didn't when I first sprayed it. Um, maybe because of the what I expected from the bottle and the name, I was a bit surprised because I, I expected this hyper masculine um, leather with castorium and vetiver, and I, I don't feel that is exactly what it is. But I found it really, really interesting. I, I think it's one of Russian Adams' most interesting and, in a way, yeah. mature creations because it's not just wham bam, thank you, ma'am. It really takes you on a journey. Um, all of those parts are just playing are playing their role in giving the complexity rather than being able to say, oh, now it's transitioning to the vetiver, yeah. now it's transitioning to the to the leather. Yeah. And it's not like, as Robes 08 calls them, rough and tumble leathers. It's not one of those. No, no, no. It's not not even like a, like a Tuscan leather. No. I mean, I would say, if you are... If you bought this, it's so much more, and you would way. expect something like that. I would suggest you check out Francesca uh, Bianchi's uh, *The Black Knight*, because that—that yeah. that is uh, what you imagine Batman to smell like. It, yeah. it's, a, it's a very, very, very dark orisey leather with vetiver. Um, but, but I mean, I mean, it's so. This is. I'm going to be very careful here, but this is so sort of gothic looking, isn't it? Yeah. And dangerous and mysterious. Mm. But actually, I, I find it a really wonderfully beautiful. Yeah, and elegant I, thing. And again, it's, it's interesting because the, the the novel War and Peace Gorgeous. is is less about. <laughs> it's not actually that much about war. A lot of it is about you know romantic complica complications in the yeah. Russian aristocracy during the Napoleonic Wars. So I kind of wondered if it, it was the book that took inspiration. But having seen his interview, I don't think is. I think it was the contrast between dark and and brightness. It's yeah, a really really interesting fragrance. It's stunning. It's sold out. It's the quickest selling um, Arisha Dori fragrance. But we hope for a second, a well, second reincarnation or a from, reincarnation. From, a first what, from what he said, I think it is going to happen. Good. I'm going to be on it. Website, whatever time, tell me and I'm going to be there. Yeah. Yet again, I've failed to get this so, one. I should have done. The next fragrance is? The next fragrance is Antiquity. So the fourth of our fragrances is Antiquity. And in a way, this was the one I was most <laughs> excited about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let. I'm going to let. Um, um, 
pass it over to Joe, and I'm just going to talk about some of the notes a little Thanks, bit more. Mate. So, um, so I'm just going to give this a quick burst onto my onto my hand, and off we go. So this notes list really attracted me because it's we are both of us are people who are attracted by vintage fragrances, and we want oh, to. Yeah. I'm often trawling eBay and looking at all these old Guerlain bottles and really I want to order them but I'm worried that they're going to be spoiled that the ingredients are yeah. not going to have the same kind of no, tenacity that they no originally did. You. Um, and so when I saw this um, you know which has things so the top note is peach aldehyde from God. 1930 so it's a 90 year old material he's using um, and I wow, guess there are wow, people who wow, could wow, say wow. well like you know why do you buy this when you can just go and buy a you know a 1940s Mitsuku well if it were that easy we would. God, it's a big, big, big one, isn't it? I mean, loads of interesting ingredients. Absolutely you, glorious. What? <laughs> First impression, absolutely glorious. I'm getting, the, I'm getting the peachy thing. I'm getting a slightly milky accord. Um, interesting. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a very gentle medicinal aspect going through there. Yeah. Well, I think the, the thing. All this this felt like Calpol quite a kind of um, kind of sheepery kind of structure. But it's weird that there's this woodiness from the start, which I think yeah. is the oud. So it's a very old, let me... It's let's Cambodian oud from the 70s. Yeah, which is from the 70s, so it's nearly 50-year-old Cambodian oud. my age. Uh, when I said to Joe, oh. I think, I think the, the first spray of this is almost a bit chaotic. It felt like almost walking through a, a, you know, a, a shop or even a museum of old fragrances. Can I put a really gross reference out there? Sure. This is really gross. And it's not meant to sound bad because I think it's, it's really beautiful. But have you ever done like a really beery poo? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I know that sounds gross, but that, there's that yeah, I mean, slight. Yeah, do you not get that? A little, uh, just that slight sort of fruitiness, sort of slightly there, fruity, animalic. There's something. a fruity, yeah, deeply kind of animalic. I mean, not a beery poo. It's interesting. I don't know if that's the kind of the work of the. Um, of the oud, like the, I mean, I've never obviously I've never encountered it's oud, not the star oud, 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 oud of this of this age. So I don't know if that's the kind of the, the effect of some of things. I just think that's really beautiful. I mean, to me, this is a thousand miles away from from the sort of Mitsuko of today. I think if if you could go back and smell it in 1919, mm. I would guess this would be a much closer a sort of relative to it. So it doesn't, it's not trying to please. That's what I love. It's, it's, it's sort of beautifully rounded and elegant, but it's not, it's not trying to please. There's nothing about this that's trying to sort of smooth off, smooth off edges deliberately. No, I think this is, as I said, I, I found the first thing of this a little bit kind of chaotic and whoa. Oh. But I think we're going to need time. We're going to have a little gap and we're going to come back and see what you think about this. Yeah, I love it. Okay, yeah. so we are back with Joe spent a few hours with oh, antiquity. Yeah. Um, now, I obviously, over, over the hours, Joe's been spending all, all four of these, and I really get Enjoying the impression that this is your favourite. This is my absolute favourite. This is everything <laughs> that I was hoping it would be, and more, and less, interestingly, because it's, it's not for me this huge, opulent, world changing thing. It's actually, there's a sort of wonderful confidence about it, like just going back in time. And this is what perfume was like. Mm. And have some of that, and you'll enjoy it. It's sort of there's a simplicity about it as well. I feel I, I think the opening is a bit like uh, wham bam in your face. Um, I, I described it as slightly chaotic, but actually now let, let me spell it on you again. I think everything has come into uh, perfect balance for me. So familiar, so comforting. It's 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 really difficult Absolutely not gorgeous. to talk about. Mitsuku, because there's this peachy aldehyde, and it does antiquity does feel like it's got this kind of sheep kind of classical sheep feel, with peach. Yeah, the peachiness, the mossiness is there yeah. for sure. But it's, I mean, it's beautiful the fact that it, it's sort of harkening back to a time before um, when perfumes were made. They were made for a feeling rather than necessarily. Mm. Here's a vetiver fragrance. Here's a whatever it might be. I love the way this doesn't feel. It's an an aura. It feel doesn't feel kind of crowd. It's certainly not a mass appealing fragrance. No, God no. You've got. I think you've got to be a, lo a lover of old vintage yeah. fragrances. This is one to just really enjoy. This is like a rabbit hole fragrance where you go down and just you're delighted. I can imagine wearing this every day and finding different things. Yeah. Little and I did. subtle I, yeah, I changes. Really did. Yeah. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. So, 
and you know, I'm still a million miles away from, in in one way, a million miles away from the sort of classics of Gerland, and in another way, right up next door to them. Yeah. So it's, I, I it's think I know fantastic. the answer, but of the four from the fifth generation, which is your favourite? Without a doubt, antiquity, and then War and Peace, and then I would say, actually, for me, the Siberian Summer, and then the Iris. Yeah. Um, but if you suddenly find that you have four bottles you want to send to me <laughs> for free, I mean, um, they're, they're all, I think they're just brilliantly made perfumes yeah. and they all have something to say. I think for me, personality. antiquity is pretty much what I expected it to be. War and Peace isn't, and I think it's been the most surprising fragrance um, and the least obvious <laughs> fragrance. And so for that reason, I think it's probably my favourite uh, from the collection. I do yeah. feel... Um, it's interesting. It, we've often kind of talked about the the two Phil Oud um, perfumes, oh, Russian yeah. Adam and Dmitry Bortnikov. And if you look at the Bortnikov uh, uh, recent releases, in a way, they are more instantly likable. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that they are instantly more instantly appealing. Whereas I think these four from Marie Chagori <laughs> are, are they're more complicated. Yeah. And as I said, when I when I first saw all, <coughs> there was, I mean, antiquity. I, I did really like. The, I was impressed by that, but the, the other three, I was like, oh, mm. I, I didn't get that wham bang immediately love, which I did with Malakal Taif, Ottoman Empire, Inverno yeah. Russia, Russia, Russian Oud. But I, I feel that I have really grown to love, especially War and Peace. So that's why I think that Russian Adam seems to have, you know, been taking a really, maybe a slightly more adventurous, mature approach. Yeah, absolutely. Approach. I don't know. In the two short years of, of us smelling stuff of his, you know, yeah. he's, I mean, I, I'm excited. I think if, like, if Mozart lived, had lived to 70, I would be desperate to hear what he wrote. And the same with Russian Adam. Yeah. I'll, I'll, he will always be excited to see what he comes up yeah. with next. Because they're just, they're beautifully made. But, please, can we have samples first? Yeah. I mean, uh, please, please, we, please. We're not telling anyone how to run, run their business, but, but we are really. Because we, <laughs> no, we don't. We, 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 we want. We want to. We just say what we want. Yeah, we want to experience these things and then buy them and know that we're going to love them and know that you know people out there are going to buy them because they want them, not so they can sell them on eBay and gouge people. Yeah. I think that's the thing because this is perfume for perfume lovers, and I think the minute it becomes anything other than that, yeah, we'd be upset. Um. But anyway, I'm, I know lots of people have tried these and have very, very different opinions on them, so please do yeah, let, us know. Uh, let us know. And so if anyone's getting rid of a bottle of antiquity, <laughs> I want one, please. Beautiful. Until next time. Bye. Happy sniffing. <laughs>